in the mid to late 1990s, all uh, bets were off where the next wrestling sensation was going to come from. This was before The Rock. This was before Goldberg. This was before a lot of the stars we see in 2021, including a guy who I saw on a card with The Edge and uh, Bad News Brown at Belden, New Brunswick when he was basically just a young, unbecoming wrestler. Now, we're talking about the Canadian strongman, the CFL multi-sport star, 6'3", 275 pounds. You can't teach height, you can't teach size. Of course, we're going to talk about Kalkamania, Glenn Kalka. Now, Glenn Kalka, born March 3rd, 64 in Edmonton, is a Canadian retired professional wrestler, hockey and football player, who competed in Canadian independent promotions during the late 1990s and a brief stint to the WWF in 97. When I say he's one of the strongest CFL players of all time, he once held the North American Pro Football bench press record, pressing 225 pounds 53 times. Now born in Edmonton to Stan and Janine Kalka, the youngest of over four children, his first sport of sport pretty well was hockey. He began playing hockey in the minor leagues with the British Columbia Hockey League with a coach in Valley Capitals in 1980, and the Medicine Hat Tigers, Spokane Flyers, and the Nanaimo Islanders in the WHL from 81-83. Kalka then was a standout defensive lineman for two years, 84 and 85, with the Bakersfield College Renegades in the Pac-9 JEC Conference of California. Now, while in Bakersfield, Kalka had got a win to a tattoo on his left shoulder. He signed his first pro contract in 86 with the Edmonton Eskos as a defensive lineman, later playing with Montreal, Toronto, Saskatchewan, uh, and uh, with the Ottawa Rough Riders when he basically retired. Now, he eventually signed with the Ottawa Rough Riders as a defensive lineman and defensive end in 1990. He later was part of the Canadian All-Star team the following year. Unfortunately, bad publicity was on the doorstep. Now, playing with the Rough Riders, he was once arrested and fined 300 for cocaine possession in March of 92. The CFL also responded by issuing Kalka an additional $500 fine and was ordered to act as the organization's official anti-drug spokesman. But uh, Kalka, like I said, uh, bad decision, but it happens. But I'm telling you something, ladies and gentlemen, he had charisma to burn, maybe just running with the wrong crowd. Now, he decided to re-enter pro hockey joining the Hampton Roads Admirals in the East Coast Hockey League during 93-94. He eventually joined the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in 95 and teaming with Brett the Hitman Hart in a tag team match against the million dollar man Ted DiBiase, uh, DiBiase and psycho Sid Vicious in a fundraising event for the Rough Riders. Kalka became interested in pursuing a career in pro wrestling. He later appeared with teammates Mike Anderson, Bobby Jerson and Scott Hendrickson on WWF, WWF Superstars, supporting Bret Hart at ringside during a match against Psycho Sid Vicious and Ted DiBiase's Million Dollar Corporation, which included King Kong Bundy, Karma, and Bonnie Donna Skip at the Regina Agrodome in Regina on November 4th, 95. Hart later offered to train Kalka and with Atlantic Grand Prix wrestling sensation and superstar Leo Burke, who also was in Stampede with Hart years ago. He spent the next two years training in Calgary, Alberta, and later toured with Emile Dupre's Grand Prix wrestling during the summer of 97. And this is where I, I met him. And again, at the Balloon Arena, I think it was just a few hundred fans there. The Edge was on the card, uh, Bad News Brown. And let me tell you something, he was sensation. To see him come into the ring, like I said, uh, you know, Vince McMahon loves the big guys, and Glenn was big. Now, he later signed a development contract with the WWF and began appearing on house shows for the association in late 97. He was ringside with Ahmed Johnson against Rocky Maivia and the Nation of Domination on November 7, 97 at Skydome. Two days later, on November 10, 97, at a television taping for Monday Night Raw, he defeated the Sexton Hardcastle Edge in a dark match. He later scored victories over Doug Furness, Miguel Perez Jr., and Adam Copeland before uh, the, the end of the year. Uh, and was scheduled to make a one-night appearance with Team Canada at the 97 Survivor Series with British Bulldog David Boy Smith, Jim the Anvil Nightheart, and Tiger Ali Singh against Team USA, which included the Patriot, Vader, Dude Love, and Goldust on November 9, 97. Although Kalka and Singh were replaced by Doug Furness and Phil Lafon, while the Patriot and Dude Love were replaced by Mark Merrill and Steve Blackman. 
Now, ever after suffering a broken leg during a match against a giant match against a jackal in Regina during early '98, he was forced to undergo corrective surgery. He remained inactive for six months while in rehab. While recovering, he was invited to the WWF training dojo under Dory Funk Jr. and made several appearances at the dojo, teaming with uh, Tom Howard against the Hardy Boys. On September 24th, and he also participated in a 40-man WWF Dojo Battle Royal at the NWA 50th Anniversary Show on October 24th, 98. He will also appear at the WWF Dojo teaming with Jose Estrada Jr. against the True Commission uh, on February 5th, 99. Now, eventually sent to Memphis-based Power Pro Wrestling, which was a WWF developmental territory, he first appeared as a mass wrestler who came to Michael Hayes' defense after being disqualified against match against Baldo. After interference from downtown Bruno during a television mat, televised match on March 20, 1999. As members of manager, manager Randy held stable, he attempted to attack Hayes after the match, but a mass wrestler ran into the ring, giving Hayes a high five before suddenly turning on him. After downtown Bruno handcuffed Hayes, Kolka helped members of Hale Stable to carry Hayes out of the arena and into the trunk of a car driven by Irish assassin Mike Tierney, who drove off with Hayes inside. Uh, in an interview following the incident, Randy Hales read the mass wrestler as Kulka, a former CFO player and cousin of Michael Hayes. Allying himself with the Hales group, he would face several veterans including Doug Furness, Dirty White Boy Tony Anthony and Kurt Angle, as well as teaming with Jared Smoot and Mike Tierney, Mick Tierney, doing his feud with Alan Steele during early 99. One day at Wild Air, he would participate in two weapon battle royals, as well as an eight-man match for the Young Guns title against Angle, Steele, Mike Tierney, Kid Wicket, Derry King, Bulldog Reigns, and Vic Rhymes on May 8, 99. In 99, he also defeated the Godfather by disqualification at WWF House Show in Ottawa on June 21st in his last appearance with the company. Remaining with Power Pro Wrestling for the next several months, he and Mike Tierney were awarding the PPW tag titles on October 2nd after Bill Dundee left their promotion. However, the titles became vacant after Kalka left their promotion himself in November. Now released from his contract by the WWF in February 2000, he later feuded with uh, PCO or Pierre Carl Roulette in Northern Championship Wrestling, facing him at Challenge Mania 8 in May 2000. Although alleged to be in negotiation with Extreme Championship Wrestling, uh, Kalka retired from pro wrestling soon after his release, and of course he's ECW folded. Now returning to Ottawa, he endeavored to start a gym and manage a Ford car dealership. In 2004, he was asked by Ottawa Sports Station, the Team 1200, to cover on-field commentary for the Ottawa Renegades. This eventually led to a regular spot as a co-host for Team 1200's Over the Edge, a popular sports talk show on CFGO. However, as of November 27, 2009, he was laid off by Chum Radio due to cutbacks. Also appeared on the uh, TSN Sports Talk Show off the record. Now, a longtime Ottawa resident, he and his wife Mariko have two children, Laura and Jackson. And uh, unfortunately, he's one of several former CFL players to publicly admit to steroid use during his pro career. Now, he also was involved in MMA. He made his debut against Wayne Zylon on a Freedom Fight card held on July 26, 2008 at the Royal Robert Gartan Arena in Gatineau. Glenn defeated uh, Zylon by TKO uh, 113 in the first round. Now, he made another a debut, acting as Charles the Wrestler in the Third Royal Theatre Company's production of Shakespeare's As You Like It, held February 4th to 14th in 2010. Now, he's been mostly a personal trainer for local gyms since his retirement. Now, Power Pro Wrestling, again, tag team championship once with Mike Tierney, and in 2000, he was ranked uh, one of the highest Canadians in the PWI uh, Top 500 at uh, 392. Well, I saw Culkin in per person, ladies and gentlemen, he had charisma and talent to burn, but like I said, like anything else, uh, a dartboard, you could throw 20 darts, hit the double uh, or the trouble, just that, uh, not say, uh, uh, it was a bad, uh, a bad time for him, but he, when he started in the wrestling, he was uh, well into his 30s, which a lot of wrestlers start in the late teens, early 20s. But like I said, in that uh, venerable Baldoon Arena where I saw him wrestle, and let me tell you something, he had skills. He was like an early and bigger version of Batista, and just as charismatic. So, 
Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's the legend of the Kalka mania himself, Glenn Kalka. If you like what we're doing here, give us a like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like Canadian wrestling, you got to love Glenn Kalka because he's the link to the Hart Foundation, to the, what they call the Attitude WWF in the late 90s, and also Leo Burke, uh, Bret Hart, you know, in the, the training era of... And, uh, uh, again, one of the, the few Atlantic Grand Prix wrestling tours that didn't get much publicity. Under the Tribune and a few other papers I worked for in New Brunswick, there wasn't much publicity. And Edge was on the card, and then now you look at him now, he's making, you know, 50 million viewers a week on the various shows he's on. It's amazing. Thanks for listening, and uh, don't forget, clean up the ring and uh, make sure there's no dirt as you get in. Have a good day. Bye.